Good morning, and welcome to worship at Brownsville United Methodist Church. My name is Greg, and I have the privilege of serving as the pastor of, of this community. And on behalf of the entire community, the entire church, we are so glad that you are here. One thing that I love about being the pastor of Brownsville is our mission. We are a Christian community who is dedicated to declaring and demonstrating God's boundless love for all. And what that looks like, the bottom line is that no matter who you are, who you love, where you come from, or, or how many times you have worshiped with us, you have a space here. Our welcome, we pray, exudes the, the larger welcoming of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who has been drawing us in all throughout the week. It is always good to gather, to sing praises to our God. And today is a special Sunday. I have the privilege of introducing to you uh, our guest preacher for today. His name is Drew Hogan, and he comes to us from the Bothell United Methodist Church community in Bothell, Washington. And you'll hear a little bit more about Drew later on in the service, and, and I know that you will be blessed by his word for us. As you get logged in and settled, I want to invite you just to take a moment to center yourself on your couch or your, your lazy boy armchair or your computer desk, wherever you may be tuning in from. Maybe you left uh, the pot of coffee on the stove or on the burner and you want to go grab that before the service begins, and now's a good time to do that. Now's a good time to find a comfortable spot and, and just breathe deeply to acknowledge yourself in, in the room and to know that although you may be alone at your computer desk, you are joining in with the entire community, the entire gathered community to worship today. And no pandemic. No social distancing, no amount of social distancing can take that away. Thanks be to God. You'll find everything that you need for the service here in the video, including the lyrics to our hymns and, and the prayer responses which we use. Um, if you'd like to take just a moment, would you, and, and fill out our online connect card, you should see it there in the comments or at our website. We would love to know that you are here and how we can be praying for and with you throughout the week. And there's also a worship bulletin if you'd like to follow on, uh, follow along step by step. So come, siblings in Christ, now is the time to worship. Let's do that. Good morning, and welcome again to Brownsville United Methodist Church on this fifth Sunday of Lent. Before we start the call to worship, I'd like to welcome our guest speaker today, and our guest speaker is Drew Hogan, who's serving as the Youth and Communications Coordinator at Bothell United Methodist Church. Um, he's a dear friend of Greg, so welcome, Drew. Join me in the call to worship. Every week is a new week, another chance to say, here I am, use me. Every day is a new day, another chance to say, thank you for yesterday, thank you for tomorrow. Every hour is a new hour, another chance to say, again and again, make me new. We do not come to this place to stay the same. We come to this place to be changed. So let us worship holy God who created yesterday, will create tomorrow, and is even now creating something new. Thanks be to God. Amen. Streams of 
Today, the scripture reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. It won't be like the covenant I made with their ancestors, when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant with me, even though I was their husband, declares the Lord. No, this is the covenant that I will make with the people of Israel 
after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my instructions within them and engrave them upon their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. They will no longer need to teach each other to say, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wrongdoing and never again remember their sins. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Peace and grace to you in the name of that working class refugee that challenges the empire and frees the oppressed. That young adult that seeks justice and is present in the places that society has stigmatized and marginalized and criminalized. That one from Nazareth whom we call Jesus the Christ. Friends, I am glad to be worshiping with you this morning, and I am grateful that I've gotten to know the Brownsville UMC community even more. It's been wonderful getting to know you all and the things that God is doing in this community from Greg. I've had the honor of being his friend for the past two years after we met at Bothell UMC, where I serve as the Youth and Community Engagement Coordinator. And one of the things I love about Greg is that we have a shared interest for music. I look forward to the day when it will be safe for me to jump across the sound and join you all for some community music activities uh, th that uh, I know he is looking forward to putting on once the uh, pandemic subsides. But for now, it is Lent, and we are returning again to the series again and again. As we look at the words and times when we say again, with pain and anguish, and we look to the times as well of saying again with joy and expectation of what God has done and what God is doing. Let us pray. God, as we enter this time and space together, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our rock and redeemer, less of me, more of you, none of me, all of you. Amen. I wonder what songs you have playing in your mind. What is it you find yourself humming to or singing along to when you're by yourself? Perhaps it might be a wedding song or it's a song from growing up. Perhaps it's the latest Broadway or Disney music that's come out. And maybe it's the music that's tied to a specific memory, like the first time you got to drive with your license. If you were anything like me, the day you got your driver's license was a very important day, and you had to capitalize on it being the best day ever. And so with that, I had a checklist of things. I had to have my keychain. I had to have the keychain that my youth minister gave me, something along the lines of not driving faster than your guardian angels. I think they caught up with me. And you, of course, had to have your car. And I had my wallet that would prominently display my driver's license. But most importantly was the stack of CDs, the soundtrack for my driving that would accompany me as I got to school, as I returned home, as I went to friends' houses, it had to be perfect. And so, without a doubt, every time I got in the car, Frank Sinatra was first up, and it was Come Fly With Me. And I have to tell you, Come Fly With Me is a wonderful song when you are trying to fly to school because you're just a little bit late. As I drove in the mornings to school with Come Fly With Me, I would sing those words, and those words would percolate through my mind, and they would appear in my mind throughout the day. And still to this day, whenever I hear Sinatra's music, it cues up memories of me driving in my land yacht of a car through the streets of Dallas. When I went to college in New York City, Sinatra had some good music for that, and 
that, of course, cues a lot of good memories. And when I met my spouse, even though Sinatra had some great love songs to, to work with, I branched out to some other musicians with Sonny and Cher's I Got You, Babe. We've got these soundtracks that are deeply ingrained in us. Soundtracks that have choruses and refrains that come and over and over again in our minds, and they direct us. They're embedded in the minds of Alzheimer's patients who become alive when they hear the songs of their childhood. Sometimes these songs for us are songs that bring us life and love and move us to healing and other songs that prove problematic. As we look at our prophet Jeremiah today, he gets a pretty typical rap for a prophet. He's disowned by his community, he's speaking truth to a community that has broken their covenant with God, and he is watching and longing for answers to why their people are suffering. Jeremiah himself came from a city just north of Jerusalem and lived under the rule of occupying Babylonians. He watched his people suffer as the Babylonians came in and destroy the land that they called sacred. He watched the Babylonians come in and destroy the land and under the, the hand of colonial power try to destroy their, cultural, their, their culture. And for Jeremiah, his song, the refrain that he spoke was repent. I don't blame him that it wasn't kumbaya. With the Babylonians coming in, the Jewish culture was at risk for Jeremiah. A priest versed in scripture and stories that were told. For Jeremiah, he knew and he read the stories of God being faithful, of God leading the, the Israelites out of captivity, of God helping them cross the rivers and the seas. He read the scrolls that showed where God was providing for us. He, he read them. He saw them. But I know we also read speed limit signs, and we read the signs on trick-or-treat bowls that say only take one, and I can't help but think that perhaps written rules may not be enough for us in our brokenness. It doesn't help that for many, these rules have been written down and defiled by power and greed and fear. And just before this section, Jeremiah says that our hearts are broken and our hurt is incurable. We have felt that. Jeremiah's entire message up to this point has been filled with grief and the constant yearning for things to be different, for people to repent for people to see that their way is not God's way and it is getting in the way. They're failing to see their neighbor and they're failing to meet the needs of the community around them. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to things being different. I'm looking forward in the midst of these pandemics of racism and COVID-19 for things to be different. And when it comes to creating a beloved community, we have to yearn for different but I also know that sometimes it's hard to do in the midst of the seasons of life with grief and depression and shame that occupy us. But in an oasis of newness and hope, God speaks through Jeremiah, through this desert moment, and gives us what is called the Book of Comfort. It's the same place where we get the language for a new covenant, the, the New Testament, for the new agreement that God is making with us. But it isn't like the covenants of old. No, it's a covenant that offers hope in the midst of our brokenness, and it comes free without condition. God is the one working, looking to transform and reform us in our brokenness, and it happens through the overwhelming power of grace and forgiveness. And friends, that is good news. These verses change the song for Jeremiah. It's future-leaning. It's what we see Jesus filling. 
and it invites us to change the songs that we sing. Until I forgive myself and forgive others, that refrain in my mind, though, is often limited. It's limited to remember what I did. Remember what you did to me. Remember what they did. Remember what we did. I think in this space we are invited to be forgiven by God as God has forgiven us and that we are invited further to forgive others and forgive ourselves. We say it in the Lord's Prayer every Sunday. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So when it's God that we remember, not ourselves, we change that refrain. We shift our focus off of ourselves to see God and remember what God has done and what God is doing. Even though God has extended this grace and forgiveness to people before, one important distinction Jeremiah makes is that it won't be like before. No, it'll be better. See, God won't write it on tablets or scrolls. God is going to write it on our hearts. And it'll be so well known that no one will have to teach each other. I mentioned before that Jeremiah was well versed in the Torah. He has read the scrolls. He has seen the ink on the paper. But the word that's used here for right on our hearts, the right is the same right of what Moses does with the Ten Commandments. It's used to carve as well. So Jeremiah isn't talking about us taking out our big click stick pen and pulling it out and quickly writing down something on a sticky note and slapping it on whatever we want. No, the writing on our heart is with care and dedication of calligraphy, and it's the time-staking chiseling away of our hearts, the time and pain it takes to, to address racism. It's the time and pain it takes to make sure that all people are seen with God's eyes for their sacred worth whether they are lesbian, gay, or bisexual, or even straight. Has this law been written on your heart, or are we limited to the writings of the decrees of institutions and denominations? Don't get me wrong, we are continuing to make sure that those are changed. It is limited often to the writings of mistranslated Bibles and often limited to the footnotes on some legal document posted on some wall somewhere. We yearn to no longer have to teach our children not to hate a person or to take a person's life in order to deal with our own temptation and fears. We yearn for this writing to happen, and sometimes it takes time and hard work that we need to do. This week, there were a number of tragedies and difficult moments, and in the midst of those, I was lifted by a story of somebody who came before Congress. In order to uh, continue the process of passing the Equality Act, Congress held um, some people to, to come and testify before Congress. And one of those people was Stelling Keating. She's a 16-year-old from Tacoma, and she testified and shared about a project that she has created in the community. It's called the Gender Cool Project. And she shared that it's her goal to help replace the opinions and of people with real experiences meeting transgender and non-binary youth who are thriving. At the end, Stella reintroduces herself, explaining that she is thriving and she is transgender. She is taking part in changing the refrain, that chorus in people's minds, that song that has been playing She is making sure that the sacred worth of transgendered persons is known and written on people's hearts. 
written on the hearts of the people that she meets, not just law written on paper. Brownsville, every Sunday, you proclaim the words that all people are welcome. Don't underestimate the importance of speaking and sharing these refrains that are written on your heart. God is working through that. God is working through you and through those words. Let's see that and claim those refrains as songs that get stuck in our head and play on repeat over and over again. In 11 days, we will be able to say some of these refrains that Jeremiah talks about in the celebration of Maundy Thursday. It's one of my favorite services of the year because it's one of the most upside-down services and it's all about eating together and what's not to love about that. It's upside down because Jesus, our king, steps into the servant role and it's the Lord's table that we're invited to from the least to the greatest to share in the same meal where forgiveness is poured out in a cup for all And we're reminded of the covenant and the refrain that Jeremiah teaches us. The refrain that you are forgiven and God's love is great. Sinatra's music, it may be good, but God's music, that's what I want written on my heart. So may you find ways to forgive yourselves and others and so that your refrain might change in God's newness of hope. And may you boldly share your refrains of God's goodness and God's law of love in places where it has not yet been sung. And may peace and grace go with you now and always. Amen. Lord, I do
Thank you, Jesse, for leading us in, in that beautiful song of praise and, and to Drew for your inspired word. Church, as we continue in, in worship, we, we remember that throughout the generations, God has been inscribing upon the hearts of God's people the generous grace and love of Jesus Christ. And so, as those who have been recipients of generosity, we too are called in worship to respond to God through the practice of generous living. If you feel called today to support the ministry and mission of Brownsville United Methodist Church with an act of generosity, you can do so in a number of ways. You can send in a physical contribution to our church address. You can use the church address to set up an automatic bill pay through your financial institution. Or you can go online to our website where you can set up and manage both one-time and recurring contributions through our secure online giving partner, Tithely. And as you're discerning that, as you're exploring those opportunities to give, I want to um, let you know of one more opportunity. Last Sunday, actually, was, was UMCOR Giving Sunday, where United Methodists throughout the connection, throughout the world, um, took up a special offering for the, 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 the justice work and, and the ministry uh, that the United Methodist Committee on Relief does. And UMCOR, they, they do a lot of things, hurricane relief, severe weather relief, uh, making cleanup kits, food kits for those in need. They do wonderful things. And so throughout the rest of the month of March, I know that we're getting close to the end here, but there is an option on Tithely where you can earmark a gift to go specifically to UMCOR, and we will make sure that it gets designated um, and sent to them. You can, of course, also um, write in the note uh, of a physical check or contribution that you would like that to go to UMCOR. So if you feel led and called to support that work, um, you can certainly do so throughout the rest of the month of March and really any time throughout the year, of course. Um, <laughs> but March is a special time for that. So come now, church, let's, let's offer ourselves to God and, and give back to the generous God who has shown us much love. Let's offer our gifts with praise and with thanksgiving.
Let's pray. Almighty God, all that we have is already yours. So we offer back to you our time, our talents, our, our witness, and also our gifts, our financial resources. By your Spirit, take these gifts and use them to bring forth your good kingdom purposes on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Well, church, as we continue in prayer, I would invite you to join me. We are, Brownsville UMC is a community that is dedicated to praying for and with one another in a variety of ways. And, and how we do that on Sunday mornings is by using a prayer response. So as I pray, you will occasionally hear me say the words, Lord, in your mercy. And you're invited to respond with the entire gathered community with the words, hear our prayer. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray. O oh, gracious God, we want to see you. We want to be known as the people who looked for Jesus. But not only that, we want to be the people who have your melodies, your songs, your choruses written on our hearts. So today we pray that your Holy Spirit would tune our hearts to sing your praises and also tune our hearts to weep with those who weep, to mourn with those who mourn, to celebrate with those who celebrate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, as we continue into the, the next chapters of our life together as a, a faith community, we pray for wisdom and for discernment to move at the pace of love as we consider, like many around us, what it looks like to reopen in a capacity that is safe and welcoming. Oh God, we are eager to see one another again. Guide us in ways that would prevent us from doing harm to others as we explore the, the new possibilities that are before us now and in the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the ways that your abiding presence has been known and felt in recent days, in Zoom calls, birthday celebrations, walks on the beach, in the new hope springing up from the ground in our garden beds, and in the receiving of vaccines. All of this is from you, God. Help us to not take a single moment of joy for granted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those of special concern to our community, including those in need of healing. We continue to pray for Dennis, Eleanor, and Mark, that they would continue to heal from their ailments. We pray for a friend who is suffering from a persistent stomach illness and for another friend grieving the return of a cancer once thought to be gone. And for those without access to clean water in and, and Flint and, and Jackson and all over, those who are reeling from severe weather and tornado destruction, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for peace, strength, and encouragement for the Razzo family, for teachers and students, those working for justice, for labor unions entrenched in negotiations and disputes with their employers, and for us, your church. We pray that we would be eager to maintain the unity in the spirit, the bonds of peace, even now, when things around us seem to be marked with frustration, conflict, and sadness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord Jesus, you are a man of sorrows. You are acquainted with grief, and and in particular, you are acquainted with our grief. Here in your mercy, our prayers for the victims and the families of the Atlanta area shootings in Georgia. We join our voices with those that call for justice to roll like a mighty river, which includes naming the ways that our Asian American siblings have been the targets of hate and oppression, presently and historically. O Lord, stir up within us a voice and a light that will not be dimmed by racism, sexism, or homophobia. Lead us by your Spirit into ways of living and relating to one another that that honor you and your image in our neighbor. Draw us nearer, ever nearer, precious Lord, to that cross towards the tomb where we may let die the ways of objectification and sin and anticipation for the gift of new life which is to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Church, I invite you now to offer your own prayers of thanksgiving, your prayers of intercession, those on behalf of somebody else. Um, I invite you to lift those now in your home, either silently or aloud as the Lord leads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, with the confidence of God's own children, let us say the prayer that the Lord Jesus taught his disciples, saying in one voice the Lord's Prayer. Our God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, as we prepare to be sent um, with a benediction by, by Drew, I want to first give my, my word of deep thanks to Drew, yes, for your incredible word, for, for being with us uh, in worship today. I'd also like to thank Sue and, and Jesse and Priscilla and Duena and the whole company of folks who have helped make these worship experience possible during these extraordinary times. I also want to make sure that you hear the invitation to join us for our coffee fellowship hour uh, on Zoom here shortly after the service at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And even if you don't have a computer that has a webcam, you can call in from any telephone, cell phone, or landline, and you can hear the voices of the community, and and we can hear yours as well. And we'd love to to meet you, perhaps for the first time, if you have been joining us um, 
if you have if you are newer to our community um, or if you're a long time member um, we'd love to have the chance to say hello and to connect with you so so please do join us there i'm looking forward to it and now a benediction as you go forth today as you close your laptop and as you turn off your device, may you know that you are forgiven. May the song you sing be of God's love, and may you sing that song of justice and liberation in the places where there is suffering in the world. And may you enjoy the refreshment of the cup of the new covenant as you look to Jerusalem and approach Holy Week. Amen.